staring at the daring of a new idea. That's what Camaro means. A slung low kind of gung ho kind of. Tom Putnam was born on a family ranch in Petaluma, California on June 23rd, 1903. He had two younger brothers, John, who became a professor of engineering at California Berkeley. His youngest brother, Rutherford, ultimately owned the GM dealership in Petaluma. Rutherford's wife, Helen, would later serve as the mayor of Petaluma and reside on the board of the Golden Gate Bridge. The father of the boys died in 1915, and so they were raised alone by their mother, who was a grade school teacher. Quite possibly the most interesting family we have ever interviewed, the entirety of which is brilliant, two of which graduated from Berkeley, and also two of which graduated from Harvard, and even one went on to be a rocket scientist. Tom attended the University of Berkeley and majored in mechanical engineering. It was there that he met the love of his life, Charlotte, and the two were married on June 6, 1928. As a freshman at Berkeley, Tom saved a young girl from drowning in the treacherous waters of Tomales Bay outside the Golden Gate Bridge. This act of heroism earned him the distinction of the Andrew Carnegie Medal of Heroism three years later. In addition to receiving the highest honor a civilian could earn in peacetime, he also received $5,000 from the Carnegie Trust. Adjusting for inflation, this sum was enough to buy quite a home in 1927. The running joke in the family was that he struggled to pay for school, but once he obtained his degree, he struggled in vain. Tom graduated from Berkeley and immediately took a job at General Motors. He was transferred to Oakland, California, where his career started. By the time 1934 rolled around, Tom had become a zone service manager with his background in General Motors and his mechanical engineering degree. In the early years of World War II, Tom was transferred to Detroit and worked in the same tank mobility unit as Frank Pavlix, one of the men currently credited with the design and build of the lunar rover. Frank was tasked with soil testing while Tom was dutifully designed to train personnel to service the designs. They ultimately achieved a tank with wheels in the front and a tracking system in the back that allowed for higher rates of speed and also be more agile in the war efforts of North Africa. After the war, Tom was promoted to the National Service Director and remained in Detroit. His image graces many historical documents and General Motors functions throughout his tenure. It was during his tenure that another highly sensitive venture was being undertaken by General Motors. In the final stages of the Electrovair design and build in Santa Barbara, California, the program was then moved back to the Tech Center for final touches in the summer of 1965. The leader of this division, Mr. P.D. Agarwal, and 12 other engineers involved in the very first battery electric passenger car resumed their efforts in the confines of the Technical Center and finished in the summer of 1965. The only fully operational Electrovair is still in the possession of General Motors and is showcased at the GM Heritage Center. Ultimately, the feasibility of this program was abandoned and then refocused on an alternative end use. Tom Putnam's name, as it appears in the F-Car pilot book, represents the crowning achievement of his career. Mr. Agarwal's division was renamed Electric Drive and was focused on building a lunar testing vehicle in 1966. Because this unit needed to operate outside the prying eyes of individuals that were not debriefed, it received its operating budget from two other divisions. The budgetary responsibilities fell on the National Fleet Service and the Sales Division. The four F-Car prototypes, officially slated for electric drive engineering tests, utilized the high budgetary restraints of the sales convention car. But that money was actually used to develop and test an astronaut training vehicle to be tested in 1968 in Pismo Beach, California. Because of his clearances and insider knowledge, Tom oversaw this program until the entirety of Agarwal's designs were perfected and ultimately pitched to NASA. He retired shortly thereafter and received a diamond retirement ring, which would ultimately be used by his granddaughter Nina in her upcoming nuptial with his grandson. The husband and wife retired to Grand Junction, Colorado, where they lived happily below the Mesa until their deaths in 1976 and 1987. Tom devoted the last years of his life to constant affection towards his grandchildren. The couple was laid to rest in a local cemetery of their early lives in Cypress Hill Memorial Park in Petaluma, California.